Hello sunshine, this is Joy from Michigan in the U.S. and this is part of my art one series for my niece, a painting series for a high school art class. So today we are going to work on something similar to this. This is a painting that I did back in 2019. It is acrylic and pen and it's just kind of a fun little, I don't know, fun little painting. So um, we're going to start with that as our kind of our guide, a little purple cone flower echinacea, I believe they are called. So I'm going to start, don't mind my dirty palette, I'm terrible about cleaning out my palette. I am going to try to decide what colors I want. This one I did a lot of purples, but I think I'm going to do more magenta this time. I will tell you the colors I'm using, you might need something slightly different. I'm going to use light magenta and rouge. And then we can always add in details with colored markers as well, or pens. You don't really want to, you don't want a broad tip marker for this. Anything that's fine tip, it will work quite well. So you're going to want more than one color of purple or pink. If you're using craft paints, you will not need to add any water. I will add water to mine just because they're quite thick and I find them easier to work with if they're watered down a little bit. The other color you're going to need is green. You know what, I might throw in a little bit of this. I'm gonna have to get more of this color because I really, really like this light olive green. It's not one of those colors that I look at on the shelf and go, oh yeah, I'll use that. Um, but I do end up using it quite a bit. And then I think I'm gonna go with this deep green permanent. So a darker green, a lighter green, two shades of purple or pink. And that will do it. Some water to clean your brush. And some brushes. And because this is just a sweet little painting, I'm only going to use a half a sheet of paper. So I took a nine by 12, that acrylic paper that I showed you guys on the last video, and I cut it in half. So there are two sides to this, and you, I doubt you'll be able to see any kind of difference on the screen. But this side has a lot more texture, and this side is a lot smoother. So I'm gonna go with the smoother side, just because I think it'll work better for, um, for the techniques that I'm trying to do. Sorry, I just broke a nail and got completely distracted, guys. All right, give me just one minute. Okay, guys, I am back with you. I. I'm going to be using a different brush than what I will tell you to use. I need to go shopping. I need to go paintbrush shopping. So uh, probably a good one for you to use would be a filbert, which is this rounded with the chisel edge. This one is not a real great example. It's not a true filbert. I will probably use, I'm looking through my brushes tonight, trying to find one, just a um, round small round brush. So use what you think will work best practice on a separate piece of paper. Um, I've showed you a little bit about doing petals, so practice that before you start to do this for the final piece that you're gonna turn into me. All right, so I'm gonna get started by adding, I don't know if I can, I'm gonna try pouring and we'll see how care, how careful I can be. Just add, oh, that one got a little bit much, but you know what, You can, oh goodness. This might not be the way to add water. Let me just put, point that out. But I do have, I have a cart with all my supplies and one of those things is paper towel. So I'm just going to soak up some of that water where I got too much. And where I spilled it on the camera. Okay, let me mix those up and then I will be right back with you to start technique. All right, back with you. My paints are mixed. I'm going to start with just sketching out just the basic shape. I don't want to get too detailed because I want my brush to do the, the drawing for me, but I need to know kind of where to place it. So the bottom of the cup will go here. There's kind of the middle of the flower. I know that's hard to see, but it's kind of there. And then just kind of draw where you want the first petal and then the rest of them I will fill in and a stem. Oh, 
and that will get us started. All right, and I do realize I'm missing a color. I don't have the brown for the middle of my flower, but I'm not gonna worry about that quite yet. We're gonna start with the petals with a slightly wet brush, and I test it on my hand just to make sure it's not too wet and not too dry. So if it's leaving a huge trace of water, that's probably too wet. I'm gonna load up my brush with the paint, the light pink first. And we're just gonna start adding in petals. And you can see that first petal has a little gap in it. I'm not gonna worry about that because I can flip this upside down and make that petal the length that I want it and the shape that I want. And we're gonna add lots of detail when we get to the pen work. So don't, don't let yourself get too worried about being exactly precise right now. You want it to look like it's intentional. You don't want petals that look like mistakes, but we also can add more detail as we go. So we start at the top and then lighten your touch as you go down. So lighter and lighter pressure. I'm gonna go in between these two, heavy pressure, light pressure. And my paints are pretty watered down. You can see almost a watercolor effect here. I'm okay with that. Kind of like that look. So just keep going around the, the base of the flower that you drew in. And you don't want all of them to be perfect little petals because nothing in life is perfect. And keep rotating your paper so that it's at the easiest angle for you. So that may look different for you than it does for anybody else and that's perfectly fine. So a lot of pressure less and less and less as you get to the tip of the petal. I almost feel like I could have done this with a larger brush as well. So if you're finding that your petals are just looking too small, grab a bigger brush and try the same technique. Really, really light touch when you get to the end of that petal. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we have all the petals that we need so, so that it looks like a complete flower. This one I want to make just a little bit bigger, so I'm going back over it a second time just to kind of fatten that petal up a little bit. Giving it more of a crisp edge. And because these paints are well, because they're acrylics, really, they do tend to dry pretty quickly, which is helpful. So very light. You can do this this way as well. Start out with the light pressure and then fatten it up. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep going that way because I got to go in between now and that's easier to do for me. This way. I hope you guys can see this. I didn't really check to make sure I was still on camera. And you're going to notice if you look at the paint color that I'm using, which is this, and you look at the color on the paper, it looks a little bit darker in real life. I know on the camera it looks almost the same, but keep that in mind. When you pick your colors, you might want to go just a shade lighter than what you're originally thinking so that you end up with the final look that you like not have enough paint on my brush that time. No worries, we'll just go back in and fill that. Sorry, my hand's kind of blocking this. Lots of pressure towards the base of the petal, with very little pressure on the external portion of the petal, the farthest part from the flower. 
And you could do fatter petals. I feel like this one has a lot of petals. I don't know that it needed that. Um, so you could have, I could have gone with a bigger brush. That's how you would correct for that. Bigger brush and fewer petals. But this is a good way to show you how to get those petals in there. All right. I feel like I need one more that's coming out from behind this one right here. And then one more little baby one right here. So as you go, just kind of look at your petals and see what you think. Do they look the way you want them to? Do they need a little bit of a difference? And right now, this almost looks like some sort of crazy sea creature. <laughs> Maybe you don't see it, but I don't know. It looks like a sea urchin or something. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to let that dry a bit. So I'm going to go into my green. I'm going to go light green first, and then we'll darken it up. And I'm going to turn this, again, always turning this so that it's the easiest way for you to get the paint on there. Get the brush stroke that you like. Not enough paint. You can stop mid-stroke, go back, load up that brush again. And you can go over this stem repeatedly. I do feel like the bottom there is getting a little bit thick. So watch for that. That can be hard to control. Keep in mind as you're putting in this stem that if you touch the wet pink, those colors are going to flow into one another. So if that's not a look that you're looking for, be really, really careful. Make sure it's dry. You could even hit it with um, a blow dryer um, but you'd want to do it on low and be very, very careful because if you, if you blow too strongly, it will move your paint. And I'm just trying to kind of solidify that line here. I'm going to go all the way down to the base of my paper. You wouldn't have to. You can leave that if you like. Oh, how did I get that pink paint? Oh, see? I had pink paint on my finger and I got it on there. So... If that should happen, just add a little water and I won't be able to get it all up, but I'll get some of it up. I'm roughing up the paper a bit more than I would like to. So watch your hands. I'm terrible about that. I always get paint on me. Um, you can always add a leaf there too. I don't want my leaf all the way over here. I don't think I want it more here. But if, you, if it was really bothering you, that's what I would do. I'd cover it up with a leaf. So we're going to add a leaf and it's going to be pointed and then it's going to come out and then back in. So I'm just doing the basic shape and this is not going to look like it should and that's okay. We're going to come back in and add the detail. So right now I'm just trying to get the basic shape of a leaf. And it's, this one is almost kind of heart-shaped, although it doesn't have the, the indentation at the, the top here. Well, I guess this would be the, the base of the leaf. And because these are so wet, they are going to kind of work like watercolors. So if you're trying to blend, you want to make sure that it's still wet. Once it dries, it may have a hard line. Which you can always go back over. I mean, we can always fix that, so don't let it upset you. But just keep that in mind as you're working on getting this leaf the way you want it. This paint dries. I'm, it's drying very quickly for me today. So just, just be aware of that. Don't let anything stress you out. This should be relaxing. And the base of my leaf there, boy, is that fat. But that's okay. I'm going to leave it. So normally I think I would want that to be a little bit thinner. It looks too fat. It should have or more distance between that portion and the, the stem, but I'm not going to worry about it. We're not looking for perfection. We're just learning some techniques. Okay, so I am going to pull out a brown. I'm not even sure what colors I have 
for brown. Whatever you have, you can work with. Um, here we go. I knew I had a brown somewhere. So I think I'm going to pull out three colors, um, which may or may not be an option for you. I'm going to use yellow ochre. I'm going to use raw umber. And I'm going to use 24 karat gold just to give it some lovely sheeny shiny effects. All right, so let me mix these up and I will be right back with you. Okay guys, I just wanna take a quick minute too to show you my palette. So this is the raw, no, not raw umber, that's yellow ochre, pardon me. This is the raw umber and then this is the gold. This is more paint than I will probably need, especially of the yellow ochre. So keep that in mind, this is like probably twice as much as what I'll need. So you only need a tiny dab of paint to do things like this, which is wonderful because that means your materials stretch a little. All right, testing the amount of water on the back of my hand. And again, we're gonna start with that lighter color. I did not water these down. I'm gonna try to water them down on the brush. I'm going to flip this upside down. Okay, sorry, I had a text come through that I needed to check. So we're just gonna kind of follow the petal line and we don't want it, like I'm, I'm intentionally making it not perfectly rounded, filling in some of those spots in between. You could also do this by double loading your brush, if you know what that means, um, with the darker brown on one side and you want the darker brown towards the base, but I'm not gonna try to do that right now. But on the back of my hand, and you could do this on a paper towel or whatever, I'm just wiping off some of that paint because on the top of this, I want there to be room to leave a highlight. So I don't want to overpower it with color. You can see already that gives it a little bit of dimension. By adding more paint down here and less paint on the top. All right, so I think we're good to move on to some of the detail work. I'm gonna clean out my brush and clean off the back of my hand. Clean water everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the petals, which is where we started with a wet brush again, just lightly wet. And we're gonna go into the deeper color, whichever color you went with. And again, I'm going to wipe it off on my hand. You can use a paper towel because you want just a little bit of color. And we're going to do the bottom portion of these petals. And it's okay if you have a little texture in it. So if I have a thin line here and then another line here, I don't have enough paint to show you that, but it doesn't, I guess what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be evenly colored. We want a variation in the color of the petals. I hope that makes sense. All right. Another way to pick your colors is to look at what pens you have that you can then take in to add detail work later on. So if that's the way you choose to do it, that is absolutely fine. And I'm just doing very light touches. You can see, I think, let me bring that a little bit closer. I'm adding little hairline strokes into the top of that flower. I feel like that looks a little more realistic. I don't want a flat line all the way across. So I'm going to do that intermittently. It doesn't have to be completely identical all the way across, which is kind of nice. And we're just gonna add some shadowing. It'll give the petals a more three-dimensional look, a more natural look. When you look at a flower up close, they don't have just one color. And I just wanna soften this line just a bit. So I'm going in with a nearly dry brush to try to eliminate some of that. All right. And you can see I'm using short strokes here. 
I'm just trying to build that depth. So you're not going to get it in one stroke. It's going to take the same thing we did on our last painting, the layering. So you're going to take your time. Don't expect this to be a quick little ditty. I mean, it is relatively quick, but take your time on it. Really add some detail. It's the details that make it so beautiful. This would this portion of it would be easier if your petals were slightly larger. So maybe keep that in mind. You might want to do slightly larger petals. And for my niece who is taking this course for high school, I do have her watch the video all the way through before she picks up a brush or a pencil or anything. So that way she knows if I, you know, if I find a mistake or a different way to do something halfway through the video, she's not already done it the wrong way. I shouldn't say the wrong way, but the hard, maybe the harder way would be a better way to say that. All right, so this petal, I'm going to add some shadow. Very light touch on these. Again, it's something that takes quite a while to master but it really does add something special to your work when you get these brush strokes down and we will add some separation too with the pen line so you can see on this one that i completed already i really added some shading in here in between the petals so don't be too worried about making it perfect we want some variation in the color we don't want everything to be the same color of pink or purple whatever color you went with we want some variation and you can achieve that too with one color, if you use a lot of, if you water it down quite a bit to start with and then go back in and just keep layering it. So if you only have one color, you can do it too. It just, you gotta be real patient with it, which, you know, it's not too terrible. All right, I feel like this one needs a little more. So you're just gonna look at your petals and determine, do they have enough color? Do they have enough of the right color? Do you need to thicken up the light pink, the dark pink? And you can keep going back through and layering these pinks. You could even add just a little bit of white if you wanted to, to add kind of a highlight. And I'm going to tweak this petal just a little bit because I feel like it's everything's going down and I want it to go up. There, and then let's, I'm gonna thicken it up a little bit too, right through here. There, I like that a little better. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing on the green stem. And we're just going to Get some of that darker green on your brush and this is the part where lots of patience lots of time is required you know i'm not going to start up by those petals because i'm not entirely sure that those are dry all the way and i'm just just sticking to one side of the stem right now and i think i may have watered my green down too much This green has a lot of blue in it. So you may experiment with your colors. That might be a good first step and see if you like the two colors together because I may end up altering this just a bit. And you see I've got this real thick line over here. That was not intentional. So I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna try to spread it a little bit so it's not such a thick, heavy line. 
Oh goodness. All right. And again, we'll go back into this with the pens so we don't have to be too worried about getting it perfect. Give yourself some grace. Okay, on the leaf. Really, really darkening down this side. Adding some depth. And again, I will add more depth with the pen, so I'm not, not looking for perfect here. That's the beauty of kind of combining mediums here. So we're, we've got detail we can add with the pen, detail we can add with the brush, and we're kind of getting the best of both worlds. I am going to add just a little curl to the tip of that leaf, just because it's fun. Cleaning off my brush and coming back in to blend this in a little bit better, so it's just a um, almost dry brush. And then I'm going to go into my light green for this side and really combine these two. Gonna add some more light green because I don't want that harsh line there. There. That's much better. All right, so that's it for the paint portion. I will grab my pens and show you how to do that portion. All right, guys, silly me. I said we were done painting. I never finished the center of the flower. Um, so I'm just going to grab my brush and we're going to, oh, I moved my water too. See, I moved everything out of the way so I could focus on the pen work and I just got ahead of myself. So I'm going to flip this upside down, a tiny bit of that real dark brown, I think, what is this called? Raw umber? Yes. Raw umber. And I'm just, I guess I should show you that too, just in case. I'm just kind of turning my, my brush. So I'm dipping it in the color and then spinning it and kind of working, you want to work that paint into the bristles. And then I'm just going to go in and because I've already done all the detail with the pink, I don't want to lose all that. So this is gonna be a little bit more tedious than it would have to be. But we're just, ooh, that's really dark. Wiping it off on my, on my hand. Use your paper towel or whatever you prefer. And then we're just gonna kinda of go in and I'm very wobbly with my hand. That's, I'm sure, not the technical word, but we're gonna say it is. And I'm just spreading the paint around, not smoothly, um, kind of circular. We want it to look like there's some texture to this. I feel like my brown's looking green, so I am gonna deepen that up just a bit. This is working quite well, so I like the, the lighter color at first and then go back over with the darker. And you can always go back into the lighter color as well if you feel like you got too dark. Ooh, that's dark, so I'll go back over that with that lighter color and really lighten that up. Lightening things up is a little bit harder, so be careful. Try not to make the same mistakes that I'm making. So I'm going to go back into my yellow ochre and just, I'm just tapping this. So that way I'm not trying to blend it, I'm trying to cover some of that darker color. So it's kind of a little bit more heavy handed than what I would typically do. But, but it's making a lovely um, texture to this. It's giving it a very dimensional look, three dimensional look I should say. So I, I kind of like that light coming from this side. Remember to always decide where your light's coming from so you know where to put the highlights and shadows, which I screwed up because down here is my highlights here. Up here, so let's see if we can fix that. So I'm dipping my brush in just water. 
And I'm coming up here and just getting that section really wet. And then with my paper towel, dab only once, because if you go back over it, you'll probably smudge stuff. So get a clean spot to, to it if you're gonna do a second dab. So let's just come back up here. Oh, see, there I go. Okay. Just gonna get this little bit of water there first. And all I'm trying to do is wet that paint again and pull it up. And it worked fairly good, so I'm happy with that. So let's go into the raw umber and come over here and bring that dark back up. So we've got the highlights on the same side. Clean my brush. Yellow ochre, and we're just going to pop that in here. Cover up that mistake. Oh, that's wonderful. That worked out very well. All right, one more color to add. And this one's just for fun. So this is my gold, 24K gold, which is one of my favorites. I love adding this to different pieces. And we're going to start by adding it here. I'm going to let that dry for a minute. Give it a little extra air. This paper has worked out really well. While that's drying, I will show you the paper that I bought. So this is Strathmore Acrylic, 246 pound. And it's really holding up well to the amount of water that I'm putting on this, to all the different things I'm putting this poor paper through. It's, it's doing quite well. So I'm going to go back into my gold and just add some here. I don't know how much it will show up in the finished piece, but it's just, I like metallics. I like to add a little bling. I feel like we need a lot more up here because this has gotten just a little too dark. And then I'm gonna, instead of dabbing, I'm just going to brush it across that part, the highlight part. Again, make sure you're turning this so it's easiest for you. And just until you think you've got it where you want it, I, mean, I don't know, can you, there you can see. So it's got that little bit of gleam to it. Some of that's just wet paint, but... Some of that's that lovely gold. All right, so we will move on. Let me see, I've got a little bit of time. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of recommendations. First is that if you're gonna use a Sharpie, it needs to be ultra fine point. Or you can get these Sharpie pens that are very, very fine point. Let me show you the difference between these two. Okay. Oh goodness, let me throw that across the room first. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see. They're pretty similar. But you want something with a very, very fine point like that for this type of work. I also use, let me pull some out. I have colored pens as well, which, which is a lot of fun. So they're just, these are from Creative Memories, but you can get these at any kind of craft supply store in different colors. So I might add a little bit of this pink if it shows up. I'll probably add some of this purple. Um, so pick your colors that you want to add. I've got so many. I've got some green. I've got another deeper purple. All right, and we're going to start... Think, let me see, I've even got some browns. Let me see where, maybe this one I will use. All right, so we're just gonna go in and start, I don't know, I should probably shouldn't start with the brown. Let me start with the purple on the flower petals. And I'm gonna open up both pens because I find that sometimes it's easier to work alternating colors. So I'm gonna go in, this is the deep, deep purple. 
and just real fine, like you're sketching a real fine line. And then you can add, this is more of the pinkish. So if you have these different colors, it's kind of fun because you can go in and add, this pen's not working very well, so I'm gonna set that one aside, but you can add different layering effects because you've got all these different colors. So this one, I'm just gonna use the dark purple. And you're gonna add shading and you're gonna add definition. Keep turning your paper so that it works for you. And I am outlining every single petal eventually. It may take me a little bit to get there, but that is the goal. And then any place where you want it to look more shaded, just add more lines so that you get the look that you want. Okay, so this one, we're gonna go all the way down and curl it up a little bit. So you can add those kind of details with your pen. So this one, I'm just gonna pull out a little bit too. So it's, it makes the petal a little bit longer than what you painted it. And then I'm gonna come in here and really shade this area down because this petal is underneath everything else. So you can see how that adds some depth to this. So you're just gonna keep going until you reach something that you like. You can also do this with black, which I will show you on the stem. Trying to make sure you guys can still see what I'm doing. My light's coming from here, so the dark side would be this one. Always remember where you put that. And I'm intentionally doing short, quick strokes. I'm trying to get this to a position you guys can see it, but... Because I don't want it to look like a printed, computerized line. I want it to look like a sketch. So this over here, it's like it went from really thick to really thin too quickly. So I'm gonna come back up here to this petal and just add black. So this is, this is the kind of stuff you can do. It's okay. Um, so it kind of thickens up the top portion of this just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go in light touch on the, on the highlight side but I still do want it kind of sketched in so that there's just definition there. When I hold my pen really lightly, I get these very faint strokes. I like that. So you just not much pressure at all for that. Okay. Let's see if I can pull that up a little bit closer so you guys can see. So this is where I thickened up that stem just to kind of make that transition from thin to thick a little bit smoother. And then just added some detail lines down there. Haven't done the leaf yet. So I'm gonna go back to the petals and then I'll do this top part. I almost feel like my overall flower could have been quite a bit bigger. So if I were going to frame this, I would probably crop off a bit of the top and a bit of the side just to make it more pleasing to the eye.
Okay, so you can just keep going as long as you want until you're happy with the final look. I'm going to add some more green lines to my stem. Just try to texture it a little bit. Give it a little more weight as well as texture. So it's not this light green wimpy looking thing. All right, one last step. I'm gonna take my brown pen. All right, sorry guys, I had a phone call come through and it cut me off. So with the brown pen, and I'll probably add a little bit of black as well, um, we're gonna add some detail to the cone part of the flower. So I'm gonna deepen especially the bottom portions. That's where we'd have the most shadow. I don't like this color, I'm gonna switch to black. I feel like it's looking greenish, so we'll just do black. And I'm I'm just doing quick little short strokes again, and then as I as I add the detail to the very bottom edge, once I have that done, the next lines will be circular. So like little C's or half circles or complete circles in some cases, and I'm just gonna go through. Sometimes for me, it's easier to, to put this this way so that I can see where my shadow needs to go right side up so I can see where the shadow should be. That gold has really added a nice little shine. The pen doesn't work as well on the gold as it does on the other colors. Maybe that's still a little bit wet. I think it is. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of a outline. And you can see squiggly lines. I'm not trying to be perfect, I'm not. I want texture, I want detail. <gasps> Sorry, I bumped my camera. Just about knocked us over. Okay, it's really okay, not sorry. Wanting. It's not wanting to draw on the gold, which is a good little tip for you guys. No matter what I do, let me find a piece of scrap paper and see if oh my pen has stopped working. That might be part of the problem. All right, I think it got some paint on it, and it just doesn't want to work like it should. So let's see if I got this. There we go. That's better. I did kind of hit this with a dryer to help it dry off. Okay. Let me try my other Sharpie. So yeah, using a metallic might add some extra steps for you, so just be aware of that. All right, I think I'm happy with that. So here is the finished. I will sign it and move on. You can see the sheeny, shiny gold on the cone of the flower there. Here's my leaf. You can tell a lot of my details are just scribbles, but up close it looks like scribbles. Farther apart it looks like, or farther away I should say, it looks like details. So we're not looking for perfection. All right, I can't wait to see what you create. I'm looking forward to your, um, your take on this assignment. I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.